I wanted to talk about the twist because this is a bag I happen to love and it is a bag that is quite popular in the Vuitton collection and people always ask, should I buy this bag? Hey guys, it's Michelle. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. Thank you guys so much for all the support you've been giving me. Now, if you are new here, welcome to the channel. And if you've been watching me and have not subscribed yet, what are you waiting for guys? Go ahead and smash that like and subscribe button. For all my returning viewers, I love you guys so much for helping me grow my channel and helping me show up for you. I love to read all the comments and this series I'm going to be talking about specific bags in what is called the Louis Vuitton New Classic Collection. My last video, I reviewed the Capucines based off of some of my viewers' questions and comments about should I buy this bag, and I'm so flattered that you do want my opinion as a former client advisor, and I guess as a handbag lover, as a fashion lover, as an accessory lover, I love to give my opinion. <laughs> Whether you agree with it or not, and don't worry, you don't have to agree. There are some bags that people love that I just wouldn't buy and vice versa, and that's okay. Well, today I wanted to talk about the twist because this is a bag I happen to love and it is a bag that is quite popular in the Vuitton collection and people always ask, should I buy this bag? If I had an opportunity to buy a bag in the Vuitton collection, the twist would be high up on my list. So let's talk about the twist and why it's so special. So first thing, this series, I talked about the Capucines and I talked about the twist and both of these bags are what is in Louis Vuitton's line that they consider new classics. Now when I joined Louis Vuitton and they trained me on this new classics, like what does that mean? Can you explain that to me? And that's not something they'll tell you when you're shopping at the store. Well, it's a new bag, but it's a classic, but it's not new enough to be a classic, but we want people to grab onto this bag so eventually it's a classic, if that makes any sense. <laughs> so the, in this category is the Capucines and the Twist. So what used to be in this collection too was the City Steamer and they seem to have taken it out. So what Vuitton is doing is they're putting some silhouettes that they're really forcing out there and saying this is going to be the silhouette you want to buy because it's going to last. So in the last video we talked about that with the Capucines. The Capucines being like the high price point leather bag, the most exquisite leather you can find. The Twist is actually the most popular bag in this category. This is the bag that sells the most in epi leather, I'd say other than the Alma. The most popular leather that is sold in Vuitton is the Emprunt, which is a little more casual, it's pebbled. Now, epi leather was actually one of the first leathers created by Louis Vuitton, and it was actually created for a container that held tea. It is extremely durable, and it's very, very hard to scratch. One thing about this leather though, like it's a little stiff and I would say compared to the other leathers, it has a bit of a masculine feel. What I do like about this bag, there's different sizes, so let's just go ahead and talk about the twist. It was introduced in 2014 when Nicolas Gesquier came on board to replace Marc Jacobs. Love Marc Jacobs, talk to, have talked about him in previous videos. But Nicolas Gesquier, he is a genius on his own and brought us some very beautiful styles and one of those being the twist. What's so great about the twist is the innovative twist lock, hence the name of the twist. Look at this LV logo that just stands out. So I happen to love this. I know a certain customer loves, loves, loves the monogram. Probably 50% of the customers love the brown monogram and the what they call the traditional LV logo. So this twist, it's bold, it's modern, and it's a little bit in your face. I love this about this bag and I actually particularly like the belt buckle of the twist. If you look at the belt of the twist, it's just very unique because it's not something that everyone's going to have. So everyone already has the monogram, although this bag is quite saturated. Okay, let's look at some of the features of the twist though. Other than the bold and modern logo, that twist to open. Okay, don't be confused. People would just try to pull on the strap and open it, <laughs> but it actually, the L part twists so that it makes a V and the whole bag opens. It's, it's beautiful, it's genius. Other things about this, it has the chain strap, which you can wear long to wear crossbody. You can double it to put it over your shoulder. And what people don't know is you can actually disconnect them at both, both points of the leather strap and put that leather strap right on the top of the bag to make it a small top handle bag. Honestly, I don't think it looks very good that way, but you know, do what you will. Now, one thing that people didn't like about this bag was the chain strap. They're used to the leather strap, 
Personally, I like the versatility of the chain strap because it's easy to pull it from crossbody length to shoulder length without having to stop and adjust anything. I will show you with my Rebecca Minkoff, like you just pull there and pull there and that is what I like about having a chain bag. Plus, I also used to tell people like, don't worry about the chain, it's like jewelry. It's like wearing a necklace or a bracelet and it just makes the whole look more elegant, gives it just a little bit of metal, a little bit of bling bling and pulls it all together. So don't be afraid of the chain strap. I think I have a whole new show coming on wallets on a chain and if they're worth it. I want to start this particular video with the twist. It's called the Twist Belt Chain Wallet. And I'm happy to see that they have actually changed this design since I work there. It used to be just a twist wallet on a chain and it went for um, $1,700 is the price point. I thought this was a great entry level type of thing if, you, if your budget really couldn't afford a whole bag. Having the Twist Wallet on a chain was a really nice thing. And I noticed it's also a very popular present for boyfriends to buy for their girlfriends, lucky girls, and for husbands to buy for their wives. And it was still at a nice price point at $1,700 to have something like a bag that wasn't a whole bag. But I'm glad to see that they changed the design of this a little bit because the old design didn't have much room in the bottom. I mean, once you put your phone in there, you couldn't fit much of anything else. So I see in the new design, which you can also wear around your waist as a belt, it has a little gusset at the bottom, which makes the wallet more expandable. So this is something to think about when you're buying wallets on a chain, like does it expand? Is it going to be done once you put your phone in there? I do like the update that they've done on this bag. And I do like that it is under $2,000. Yay, so you're still getting like something that looks like a bag, even though they call it a wallet. But, you know, bear in mind, you're not gonna fit a whole lot of things in this bag. But this bag also falls in the category of something more evening and elegant, which is really hard to find in Vuitton right now. I do believe this bag can be both daytime and nighttime, and it comes in black with the gold hardware or black with the silver hardware. Okay, next on the list is the Twist Mini. First off, I am like shocked and disappointed by these prices because the Twist Mini is $3,800. When I worked there, and it wasn't that long ago, the Twist PM was $3,300, and that's one size category higher. Okay, so let's give you some details about the Twist Mini. It's 6.1 inches across, 4.9 height, and 2.8 width. Compared to the chain wallet, the chain wallet is 7.5 length, 5.3 height, 1.7 inch width. So you will have one more inch in width with the Twist Mini for the price. The price is almost doubled for the Mini. This makes the wallet on a chain actually a good deal in the Twist collection. And honestly, I would skip the Mini altogether. Next, we have the Twist PM, and I find this the perfect size bag. Now, what the heck, Vuitton? This bag goes for $4,300. When I work there, the bag was $3,300. How did it go up $1,000 in a matter of two years? But I don't think the size of the bag has changed. I'm just so confused. I was really waiting for a Twist PM to show up in the employee online store. And there was a limited edition one. It was white epi leather with like a black floral print. So it's very unique, but it wasn't like, it wasn't like, oh, I'm, I'm dying to buy this. And I kept looking at it, but I discussed with a coworker. He says, wait till it gets to $900. I said, yeah, that's a great strategy. Because if you're unsure of something, it doesn't matter if it's $100 or $1,000. It's like, if you're unsure, you're probably not going to use it. Well, lo and behold, someone else bought the bag, so then, you know, the universe spoke for me. So I never got my Twist PM. But this I do find the perfect size. She is 7.1 length, 5.1 height, 3.1 inches. Okay, so compare that with the mini on your wallet and you would see why, like, let's just eliminate the mini. Not sure why you need that bag there. And the mini is at 3,800. Okay, so it's a nicer price point. Um, yeah, again, if money it were not an issue, I would be all over the Twist PM. And this bag does come with the chain, but I think this bag can be a little more fun too. As you see here, you've got the leather strap attachment and the chain is actually attached to the bag and not detachable. Okay, so let's look at this picture here. I do like 
some of the reiterations they've done on the twists on the ones with the leather straps because those leather, leather straps, they are adjustable. They can be longer to be adjusted to crossbody. I think that's very unique. It's very smart. So if you really don't like the chain straps, I would definitely go for this option. I mentioned this in another video. The camel version of the Twist MM is one of the most beautiful bags I've ever seen. So with that said, let's talk about the Twist MM. This was the most popular and most available size, but one thing I would have to say about the Twist MM, it's rather large. So someone like me, I wouldn't be too comfortable carrying such a big bag all the time. And it always surprised me that these petite ladies wanted to carry this big bag. Let's read the dimensions. 9.1 length, 6.7 height, and 3.7 width. So it's considerably bigger than its counterparts, than its baby sisters in the collection. But I guess price-wise, if you want to get more bang for your buck, the Twist MM is now $4,300. Oh, I did make a mistake. Okay, so the Twist PM, and I'm trying to, to uh, compare like styles together. The price does vary depending on these embellishments. So the Twist PM is $4,050. In those regards, you know, sometimes you look at it and like, okay, well, then add a little more money because the Twist MM is $4,300. It's only $250 more. I might as well go for a bigger bag with bigger capacity because you know us women, we start with a little handbag and we keep shoving stuff in there and then next thing you know, my little crossbody has become a big old tote because I want to carry thing with me. Yeah, it happens. So sometimes the logic is just like, just put in a little more for a bigger bag. Um, like I said, I like some of these reiterations of the twist if you don't, I do like the versatility of having the leather handle that does bring the price up a little bit. Like this one here, it's 4,600. You have that leather strap that can be over the shoulder or can adjust to crossbody. But I do like the, uh, the idea of the chain because with the original twist, I wouldn't really detach the chain and just make it a top handle with that. So they did some really beautiful designs here. The only one I don't like, the scrunchie. The Twist MM with and PM with the top handle scrunchie. What is this? It just looks so 90s and I don't like it. Sorry if you do like it, you know, if you love it, buy it. This is just my opinion. Um, but yeah, I would skip that because I think it could look very dated in a few years when the scrunchies go out and then they'll come back in. You know, they'll come back in in 20 years or so. But I'm not really a fan, I don't like this particular bag top handle i do i have noticed too they have added other materials of the twist but i still personally really like it in the epi leather i like the sleekness of it so this is louis vuitton's flat bag it can be compared and i've heard people comparing it to the chanel boy bag which is also a very masculine type of bag hence called boy bag so if you look at a Vuitton, it has that masculine feel as well in the Epi leather. It's a little more masculine and just kind of the boxiness of it. Okay, so one thing to note about both, both bags is just the opening, the, the twist, the leather, the flap, the leather. It can be a little heavy and cumbersome when you're opening the bag. I've had here's, heard this complaint about the Chanel Boy bag because it opens like a book and it can get very heavy. So with the uh, Vuitton twist, it's not quite all the way the length of the bag like with the Chanel. You have a little you have a little space there, so it's not quite as heavy. But yeah, that is something you have to think about, but you do with all flat bags, right? How do you want to enter your bag? Now, another thing people have questioned, what is this? Why does the bag have a camel toe? <laughs> okay, we call it a wave. We like to be classy and we call it a wave. Um, because the wave is part of like Louis Vuitton insignia in history. But the reason why it's there, and it's actually very genius why it's there, this prevents the bag from bottoming out. What do I mean by that? When you put your wallet, your phone, and your everything, your keys, and you know, we like to stuff our bags. I have seen people carrying their Chanel flaps where the bottom of the bag sags down and it doesn't look pretty anymore. So this is why we have bag organizers and such, right? Well, that little gusset right there, it just prevents anything from having its weight in the center of the bag. So your things will go here and here. It prevents your bag from sagging out at the bottom. So it's actually very genius and it does help the bag to just stand up on the countertop or the tabletop. It looks a little funny from the side, but once you're over that, like it's not a big deal. It's actually a very genius design element. 
Okay, so lastly about the twist, and I did mention this in another video. Look on the resale market first, because I have seen this bag for half of the retail price. Unfortunately, the Epi Leathers do not carry their resale value as much as the canvas monograms. It is a mystery to me. <laughs> So for that reason, if you can get it for less than retail, way less than retail, it is well worth the price of this bag because of its classic lines, its classic shape, and its bold modern design. I really do think this is a versatile bag that you can carry for quite a long time, as long as it doesn't have a scrunchie. I also think they've done a great job in just making these bags very artful, very youthful, and very unique and I'm the type of person that doesn't like to carry the same bag that everyone else does so I do love this collection. I hope I've given you some valuable advice. Do you love the twist? Do you hate the twist? Would you not even touch it? Do you own one? What is your experience with the twist? Let me know in the comments. Again guys if you've made it to this point of the video thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to smash that like and subscribe button. Love you guys. I will see you all soon. My name is Michelle. Bye.